Hey everyone, it's Kelly. It has been a little while since I have posted a video, but I had a few requests on my Instagram to share a flip through of my completed May 2021 Traveler's Notebook. This is the Traveler's Notebook from Studio Calico. So I am working a month behind in these notebooks. So this is actually the June notebook, but I documented May. And I just want to give a super quick update on where I've been and kind of what's been going on. I feel like it would be maybe a little weird if I didn't mention something about where I've been. I will put a timestamp in the video if you just want to jump ahead to the flip through. Uh, but in April, my husband and I decided that we wanted to sell our house and we have lived here for 16 years and it is a six bedroom house. So it's a large house and there was quite a bit of clearing out that we needed to do. So I had a couple garage sales. I was working on cleaning out bedrooms, you know, taking stuff to Goodwill, making donation stops. And it took up a lot more time than I was anticipating. And I just did not have time to record and create videos. If you create video content, you know how much work goes into making those videos. So I'm to a point now where I think I have a little bit more free time. I was only getting into my craft room about once a week when we were going through all of that cleanup and clear out. And, but now things are, have settled down a little bit where we've got a lot done and I think I'm gonna have more time. So I'm hoping that I will have time to post more videos. I'm not sure how often they will be. And I do want to mention that I did see just recently that I have a bunch of comments that I have not answered. When I'm not creating regular content, I forget to check the comments. So if you have left a comment on a video recently or in the past couple months, I promise I will get to them. I appreciate everyone watching and taking time to comment. That really means so much to me. I can't even begin to explain how much it means. But let's go ahead and jump into the Traveler's Notebook. And I'm hoping that we can get through this without too much noise from my dogs. My scrap broom is on the main level and they're kind of wandering around right now so we'll see how it goes but like I said this is the June Traveler's Notebook for Studio Calico I used a date stamp from scrapbook.com I will try to link anything in the description box below that is still available I used a lot of stuff from my stash so we'll see how that goes but I just stamped May 2021 on the outside on the inside I just have a sticker here from an older Maggie Holmes collection it's a puffy sticker and just to use see I told you <laughs> dogs <laughs> just a second okay so like i said <laughs> was saying i just used a puffy sticker from an older maggie holmes collection as the intro page and then on the first page here, if you're not familiar with Studio Calico's notebooks, they do come with pattern paper already printed on them. So this gummy bear design was already printed there. I did take one of the chipboard pieces from, I think it was the documenter kit, to add just a little bit of texture on that left-hand side. And then I want to do a currently list in each of my notebooks. So I just stamped currently and then stamped the eating, listening, buying, reading, drinking, dreaming, making, watching. These gummy bear stickers are from an older Dear Lizzie collection and they were just too perfect not to use with the gummy bear design on the other side of the page. I did type and print my journaling on some clear sticker paper. I forgot that I had clear sticker paper left over for when, when I was doing my happy planner scrapbooking. I would print out stickers, my own stickers and use them there. So I just printed that out uh, using just my normal printer and just cut it into strips and then added it into those areas. The next page, this this makes me laugh, was already pre-printed on the page. I just stamped everyday moments and my stamp skipped a little bit, shifted a little bit when I was stamping. So it almost has like a shadow effect to it, which I actually think that turned out pretty cool. So I'm not too upset about that. It is what it is. There's no, no real way to fix it. So that is just going to stay that way. And then on this side, I took some labels from the Studio Calico kit and I used the laugh story stamp from Allie Edwards to stamp out a lot of laugh sentiments. I also have a couple stamps from a couple other manufacturers. So this stamp is a paper person stamp and then this is an everyday explorer stamp, but just kind of added those around. I also added some stars from the Studio Calico kit and these puffy stars I think are from Pink Fresh Studio. The next page is uh, a non-photo documentation, which I think is a lot of fun and something great to do in traveler's notebooks. So the star pattern was already printed on there. I used a stamp from Studio Calico to stamp out the speech bubble and then the I said and the he said. And this is a 
about a conversation that my son and I had about moving. So I just typed it out, printed it on some pattern paper, used a punch to make some ticket stubs on the corners, used a label and stamped conversations. And it just documents a conversation that I had with my son. And I think that the Traveler's Notebook is such a great way to document stories that maybe you don't have photos to go along with it. So I have a couple of those in this book. The next page is a full page photo and then I used an LOL chipboard from an Amy Tangerine collection along with a label from Ellie Studio. I typed my journaling on there and then I also found these stickers in my stash that were the same colors as the polka dots and they had these smiley faces on them so I just sprinkled them around the page. I think that those are from Amy Tangerine as well. The next page, I did some large stamping on the side. Uh, it says bump, 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 and just kind of repeats down the page. Our cat has super heavy paws, and everywhere he walks in our house, we can hear him on our hardwood and on our tile. And we always laugh whenever we hear him moving around, and that's the noise that we say when we hear him moving around. So I used some die cuts from Pink Fresh Studio. I think this is the Joyful Day collection, along with some of the alpha stickers. A strip of washi up on the top and then I also added my journaling using another Ellie Studio label. I did add, I can't remember if I said this a second ago, but I added some stitching through the letters and I also added some enamel dots. I do use liquid adhesive when I add enamel dots because they don't stick overly well and I want to make sure that they don't fall out since these pages are not in a page protector. The next page is another joyful day page. I used a lot of die cuts and embellishments from that collection. I actually stamped a, another large title on the pre-printed page from Studio Calico, but I didn't like how it turned out. So I just took a pattern paper, trimmed it down to fit in the notebook and covered it up. And then I just added some die cuts and some puffy stickers down the center just to add just a little bit of embellishing there. I also took a couple die cuts from the pack. These are actually uh, two separate die cuts. They just look like uh, torn paper and typed and printed my journaling on there and added my photo. This next page is another one of those that I was telling you that I had in the journal that does not have photos, but this one is a little bit more personal. So I have the actual story covered up, but you can get an idea of what I did here. So I just added some stamps along the pre-printed yes and ugh, challenge accepted and gave it my all. And then I just took a couple tags, printed the journaling out and added some whole reinforcers. And it just talks about a story that, um, of a, how do I want to word this of a moment in my son's life that brought a little bit of disappointment, but also brought a lot of growth. So I have that documented here and I asked him if I could include that in the journal. And he said that that was fine, but I am going to keep it private just to give him a little bit of privacy. And this next page, I love this rainbow here. I took some inks and coordinating colors and grabbed some of my TV stamp sets and just used the same color ink and stamped down the side. I used some of the stars again from the Studio Calico kit just to add a little bit of color and just a little bit of embellishing on that side. I used a couple Allie Edwards stamp sets here and then added a fun sticker or so fun sticker in the center along with some numbers. And then my journaling correlates with the numbers on what I was watching this month. Next page is super simple. It um, is about a moment of kindness that my son shows me almost every day. He always asks how my day was at work. When I come home from work, that's the first thing he always asks me. I mean, nine times out of 10, he asks me how my day was. And super simple page. I used some Allie Edwards stamps on the side where the ice cream cone is. I liked how those circle stamps fit right in the center there. Again, another die cut from that Joyful Day set, added a couple staples, and then I added just a little bit of stamping behind the photo. And I think that that little bit of stamping adds a lot of visual interest to the spread. Very, very simple, but very, very effective. The next page is about Mother's Day. And these are a couple photos that I will also include in my project life. I had someone ask on my Instagram channel what I plan on using my traveler's notebook for 
because I do Project Life and they do Project Life as well, what stories I plan on telling here that I wouldn't tell in Project Life. So I am using a lot of the same photos, but I am using a different spin on the photo. So a different story that I think of when I see the photo. So my Project Life is more of a who, what, where, and when, and this journal is a little bit more feelings based. So I'm just talking about my relationship with my siblings and my mom and uh, my nieces and nephew and my son and just their relationships and how important they are to me. So I used a couple different collections here. I used, I used, <laughs> I told you these dogs, they just have to be with me all the time. So I used a um, collection. I think it was an Echo Park collection. It was the Hello Again. It's really old, but the colors matched the um the traveler's notebook really well and then i also use some of the joyful day so i have some puffy stickers here i use my typewriter to type out the journaling and then just use a circle die that fit within the pre-printed design on the traveler's notebook and added a large floral sticker and like i said just some puffy stickers and some die cuts these photos and memories from May are not in order. So this is from May 9th, whereas some other things, this was May 26th. So I go more for the pattern and not necessarily working in chronological order. This next page, we had snow on Mother's Day this year, which I think that's the latest it's ever snowed in Indiana where I live and these die cuts from the Joyful Day collection, I thought that they were really cool. I don't think they're intended to be snowflakes, but that's what they reminded me of. And I thought they worked really well for what I was trying to tell here. The journaling is actually on the packaging from the Joyful Day collection. And I used my typewriter again to add the journaling. And then I just used a border punch at the top to add a little bit of detail there. I added stitching through the letters again, just to make sure that they're gonna stay in place. Some enamel dots, and then also some tiny phrase stickers from Tim Holtz. This next page, again, very, very simple. I created a collage of photos and printed them off. They're, I think, roughly two by two. And I was going through some older photo boxes that I came across when I was cleaning out a closet and came across these older photos. I think the range is anywhere from like 2004 to, I think I included it in the journaling here. Yeah, 2004, um, some of these photos were in 2005. My son was so little there in <laughs> that car with my dad and it just brought up a lot of memories and a lot of emotion. So I, again, typed out the journaling on clear sticker paper and just added that in the two empty spots. I also added some puffy stickers from an older Maggie Holmes collection, again, just for a little bit of embellishing and then added some puffy hearts on the opposite side just to give a little bit of texture and a little bit of embellishing on that side. This next page is using a paper person uh, kit and I use some stamps for my stash as well, but the puffy stickers are from paper person. This card is from paper person. And then I added some washi tape here and the washi tape ended up being a little bit longer than I needed. it. And when I tore it, I decided to add the opposite piece on this side. And I like how it brings a little bit of that color onto this side as well. Sorry, my dogs are playing out there with a the toy. So. <laughs> This opposite page, super simple. I have that folded over piece of washi, a few tiny phrase stickers that are dog themed. That was from an older Studio Calico sticker sheet. And then a couple green stars to match the pattern. And then it's a full size photo of my screensaver on my phone of my dog, which was the one that you saw in the video. This next page, uh, I can't see a rainbow and not think about Amy Tangerine. So I went through some of my older product and came across, I think this is the Picnic in the Park collection. And it just added some die cuts and some stickers and then added my journaling behind that little Polaroid frame die cut. And this is just about being in the thick of things, clearing things out, getting ready for garage sales, and about how my dog, she never left my side. She was with me everywhere. No matter how many times I was going in and out of the house, she was always right with me in the heat. This next page is all about the books that I read in 
June, no, I'm sorry, in May. And so I used some stamps. This most definitely yes was included on the pattern paper, but the book review and the little boxes were stamped on there from a Studio Calico stamp set. Again, printed my journaling on some clear sticker paper, included the star rating. I do include the books that I read and the TV shows that I watch in my project life, but I kind of like having an overview, being able to see everything all on one page rather than flipping through the different weeks. So I think that is something that I will continue to do because it is nice just to see that overview. We're getting close to the end, guys. So this next page, again, is a non-photo spread. It's a summer bucket list. I added a sticker onto that pre-printed design and then used a bunch of stamps in Studio Calico inks on this other side about things that I wanna do this summer. This page was actually the first page that I made in this notebook. The alphabet reminded me of my of, of school and my son's last day of school was in May, so I did a first day, last day picture, and then a picture of the awards that he received, and then did some journaling about how proud I am of him and all the hard work that he put in. I used a lot of different products from my stash. Uh, the puffy stickers are older LA Studio, and then a lot of the stuff, I think some of it's Little Yellow Bicycle. I have had it forever. I just have an iris container that I keep all of my school's school themed supplies in, and including this report card ticket that I ran through by typewriter, and it just worked out really well for this spread. The next page, again, I have some of the journaling covered up, but the more of this, less of this was included on the pre-printed design. I included a couple photos, typed my journaling, just printed it out on copy paper, and then added some photo squares or photo corners to the sides of the journaling just for a teeny bit of embellishing. These pages are so simple, but I feel like you don't need to be too too embellishment heavy when it comes to traveler's notebooks, at least in my opinion. I. I like the way my spreads turned out. I know some people may think that they're a little boring, but I am really happy with how this notebook turned out. And the last page is just a picture of my scrapbook room and it says fun stuff happens here. And it's a picture of my cat sleeping in my scrapbook room and this is where the fun stuff happens. So I thought that was a great photo to use. So I hope you enjoyed this flip through. My notebook turned out really chunky, but it's staying together very well. I'm hoping as we flip through it that it will continue <laughs> to stay bound well. Uh, but I'm really enjoying this. I worked on this more as a mini album rather than a spread. I would kind of work on one page, go to another, and then come back, go to another. So I'm not sure if I can really do uh, necessarily process videos of these because like I said, I just bounce around so much. A lot of times I get the page laid out and then I'll do all of my journaling printing at the very end. So I'm not sure. I'll have to kind of see how it goes. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever really done a traveler's notebook like this. I tried working on one in the past, but the paper was so thin and I hated it. But the Studio Calico notebook, the paper quality is amazing. I didn't have any bleed through with my stamping. I did use all Studio Calico inks for my stamping if I stamped directly onto the paper and it worked out really well. No bleed through, no trouble, and I really had a lot of fun putting this notebook together. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a like or leave a comment below. If you haven't subscribed already, I would love for you to. I really do plan on getting some more videos out there a little bit more frequently, and I hope to see you guys very, very soon, and I hope you all have a great week.